Hello everyone, this is David, mobile developer. In this video I'm going to show you how to install Flutter on a Linux machine. We're going to follow the official instructions to be able to develop for Android, Linux desktop and the web. Let's go! First, head to flutter.dev, select Linux and the first thing that the instructions tell us is that we need to install the required dependencies. So here are the basic dependencies for Flutter, but if we scroll down, we will see another set of dependencies needed for Linux desktop. I have compiled all of these dependencies in a single command. I'm going to paste it to install all of them. You can find this command in the video description. After this is done, the instructions tell us that we can install Flutter from a snap package. I don't recommend to do it. I have tried in the past and I had problems. I will skip this part. I'm going to do a manual installation and this is what I recommend you to do too. So download the file. I'm going to create a folder in my home folder to put the binaries. I'm going to move the download file here and I'm going to uncompress it. Now I'm going to get rid of the compressed file. So we have here the Flutter folder and within we have the binaries required to build Flutter apps. The next thing will be to update the global path variable so we can invoke the flutter command in any part of the system. And for that I'm going to update the dot profile file which is in the home folder. I'm going to alter the path here to include this new flutter folder. After doing that, the Flutter command will not be available yet because we have to reload the path. We do this through the source command. Another method is to log out and log in again and then the Flutter command should be available. Now the documentation tells us that we should execute Flutter Doctor to see if any additional requirements are not met. We're going to do it now. We're missing the Android toolchain. So the next thing I'm going to do is to install Android Studio, which is my main IDE. And with it, uh, the Android SDK will also be installed. So we're going to follow the link provided in the documentation. I'm going to download Android Studio. Once it's downloaded, I'm going to move it here and uncompress it. And once this is done, I'm going to get rid of the compressed file. Now enter the bin folder and execute the studio file. I want share data, click on next, select custom, here you can configure some parameters. I'm going to leave it as it is now. Accept all the licenses. Click on finish and the installation will begin. Now I'm going to create a desktop entry. Click on this settings button and click on create desktop entry. This way we can open Android Studio directly without the need of uh, launching this file from the terminal. Now 
The next thing I'm going to do is to go to the plugins and install the Flutter plugin. This is required to develop with Flutter. This is not needed if you're going to use VS Code. In my case, it's needed because I mainly use Android Studio. So we're going to execute Flutter Doctor again to see what is missing. And we see here that we need to install the command line tools. And in order to do that, click on more actions, SDK manager, go to SDK tools and select Android SDK command line tools. Click on apply. Execute Flutter Doctor again. The command line tools warning is gone. Next, we're going to accept the Android licenses for Flutter. We do this through the Flutter Doctor Android licenses command. Type Y in each option to agree to the license. Execute Flutter Doctor again. Now we have all the required components installed in order to execute a basic app. So I'm going to create a sample project now. I'm going to call it my first Flutter app. I'm going to open it in Android Studio. wait until the ID scans all the files and configures everything. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to execute this basic template as a desktop app and for that we need to enable the desktop support for Flutter. We do this by typing this command which is in the official documentation. Now we should restart the IDE. We can go to File, Invalidate Caches, hit Restart, and the IDE will restart. Now select the Linux target, hit on Play. The first time that we do this, some dependencies will be downloaded. Now we have an error that is telling us that this project that we have created does not have a Linux target. So to fix that, we're going to the project root and we're going to add the Linux target through this command. Now go back to Android Studio, press play, and here we have our sample Flutter app. The next thing that I'm going to do is to configure the Android emulator. First, you have to enable virtualization in your BIOS settings. Uh, the way this is done depends on your BIOS, but basically you have to boot into the BIOS options and there look for uh, some kind of virtualization entry and enable it. I have done this and I have to restart. Now open Android Studio and select the device manager in the top menu bar. Click on create device. I'm going to select the uh, Pixel 4. One important note here is that don't expect this list of devices to behave as real devices. And the only thing that we are applying here is um, is a screen resolution and a screen density. So I have selected the Pixel 4, but this will not behave as a Pixel 4, but will have the same 
screen and the same dimensions. Besides of that, it's just the Android emulator. Now we need to select a system image. I'm going to select the API level 31. Click on download. Once it's downloaded, click on next. I'm going to leave these options as they are now. Now we have our emulator ready. Click on the play button to open it. Wait a few seconds. Now after the emulator has completed the first boot, we can hit the play button again. Wait until the required dependencies are downloaded again. And here we have our sample app running in the Android emulator. The last thing I'm going to do is to run this in Chrome. You have to have Chrome installed first. Now select Chrome target and hit on play. Wait a few seconds. And here we have the sample app running in a web browser. This is all for today. This has been a very short video. I'm preparing some tutorials on some topics that I had written down and things that you have asked me for. I want to thank those of you who have started following me. If you have suggestions on things you would like to learn about Flutter or any other topics I cover in my videos, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for your time and support. Goodbye.